eggplant. Hello all, welcome to this video where I'll cover the concepts of creating a strong automation framework that will adapt and grow as your project and team expand. In this video, I'll explain the benefits of using a framework, some considerations when planning the test environment, and best practices to consider when designing and implementing your own framework. There are a number of benefits to creating a framework. By spending some extra time up front to develop a framework, many more hours of effort will be saved later on in the project. Having a clear, well-documented, and well-designed framework allows you to build scripts within a structured workflow. This means that the creation of scripts will be organized, providing a process for oversight and traceability of script creation. A strong framework relies on a core of code that is reusable across test scenarios. A well-designed framework allows the necessary organizational components to be in place so that the core code is easy to traverse, find, and leverage. This enables the acceleration of the creation of new test scripts by taking advantage of code and organizational practices already developed by the team. The same reusable components of the framework that make script creation fast also maximize the ease and speed of maintaining those scripts and handlers and image assets. A strong framework establishes and documents the guidelines that follow eggplant functional image capturing and scripting best practices. By adhering to these best practices, testers are able to write robust code that will provide meaningful results and minimize maintenance requirements. Using a form of the suite structure proposed later in this video might also have implications for the execution speed of your scripts due to a limited use of image collections. Before designing your framework, consider the different components of your test environment. The devices and platforms you must support now and possibly in the future will dictate how your framework is organized. Which devices, platforms, and operating systems are used by your customers or users? Out of all of those supported combinations, which are the most commonly used? Also consider the behavior of your users, such as how often they upgrade their environments to the most recent version of an operating system or web browser. Once you've identified the various device, platform, and operating system version combinations that are important to your testing, you can begin to plan the organization of your framework, which will primarily manifest in the way you structure your eggplant functional suites. There are a number of best practices to consider when organizing your suites in a way that will reflect the demands of your test environment. The first recommendation is that you keep any code or images that are specific to a particular device or platform in a separate suite. This makes locating pre-existing assets and adding new assets for a new environment much easier. It also makes dropping support for a particular device or platform easier. Having an understandable and descriptive naming convention for suites, handlers, and images is essential, and it will make code easily readable while also making finding relevant code and images much easier. If the names of handlers and images are descriptive, people can easily locate useful code or images, and they will be able to reuse those assets instead of unknowingly duplicating effort. Images and handlers that represent the same element or functionality, respectively, across different devices or platforms will share the same name. Images and handlers that represent the same element or functionality, respectively, across different devices or platforms will share the same name which means you'll only need one version of a test script to test different devices or platforms. When it comes to being able to quickly create and maintain test scripts, using a modularized approach with short focused handlers is essential. Break workflows down into relatively short sections of code that focus on a specific reusable portion of an overall workflow. Give those focused handlers meaningful names according to your naming convention and store them in a centralized location among your sets of suites to make them easy to access for the purposes of building new test scripts quickly. Using modularized handlers also allows for quick maintenance as code updates only need to be applied to the reusable handler and then will push to any test scripts that reference that handler. See our training video on modularization and parameterization for more information on how to make your code reusable. I'll show an example combining these concepts of suite structure later in this video. Image collections still have a purpose when it comes to designing a strong framework. Separate suites will be used to store images that belong to a particular device or platform, which leaves image collections for dealing with visual variations within the same device or platform. Using image collections this way allows your code to stay simple. 
Eggplant functional users who must test across various devices and platforms will rely more heavily on OCR because OCR is not sensitive to differences in rendered text across these different devices and platforms. Though OCR is very flexible, we have two main recommendations when using OCR in a complex environment. The first recommendation is to leverage search rectangles, but to do so with the screen part function. The screen part function automatically adjusts to the actual resolution of your SUT, making search rectangles highly flexible. Secondly, when working with mobile devices and some Ultra HD displays, changing the DPI used by OCR searches is required or recommended for best results. Efficiently setting the DPI within your code will make adjusting the DPI much easier. I'll discuss using the screen part function and adjusting the DPI in further detail later in this video. The final best practices I'll discuss are business process related and will largely occur outside the context of Eggplant Functional. Firstly, ensure any components or guidelines relating to your framework are documented and accessible to anyone who's working on the automation project. Secondly, regularly perform code reviews for any code or images that are added to the framework. These two recommendations will ensure that not only are people able to follow the guidelines of the framework, but also that the guidelines are enforced and used consistently. Let's look at some examples of the different components of a good framework. Here's a basic diagram showing how test cases, handlers, and images might be divided among suites. The top level of suites contains the scripts that form full test cases and might be run directly as part of a test. The middle layer of suites would contain any handlers or images that are specific to a particular application you're looking to test. If you're responsible for testing multiple applications, you will have at least one suite for each application you're testing. The third bottom level of suites will contain any images or handlers that are unique to a specific platform. Also at this level, you'll likely have a suite of core handlers and images that are useful across the various applications or platforms you're testing. These different levels of suites are linked together as helper suites, which allows you to view the helper suite assets within the calling suite and make references to any scripts or images stored within the helper suites. Here's an example of a possible suite structure. The shown suite represents the test design suite, which is at the top level of the structure. The test design suite has its own scripts, which combine reusable handlers to build a test. On the left side, we can see four suites that are added as helpers to the test design suite. There is a suite for each of the Mac and Windows platforms, and those suites contain scripts that are unique to those platforms. Note how in each suite, there is a version of the cross-browser, enter URL, and open browser scripts. The script name reuse is intentional and allows my test script on the right to run against either the Mac or Windows platforms. Here's another example in the context of mobile automation. Note the way the images have been organized into separate suites for the Galaxy S6 and iPhone 6. Adding the lower levels of suites as helpers to the calling suite provides an easy way to view the scripts and images of those suites within the calling suite. However, the helper suite relationship does not properly set up the suite relationships for the sake of test execution. When executing a test, we must tell Eggplant which suite or suites to get the appropriate version of a script or image from. The initial suite's global property allows a way to dynamically link the calling suite to the appropriate set of platform-specific scripts and images. More specifically, the initial suites determines the first suite or suites that are searched when looking for a particular script or image file. Eggplant will search the initial suite for the script or image name before searching the calling suite for that script or image name. If a script or image by that name is found in the initial suites, then Eggplant will use that version of the script or image and ignore versions in any other suites, including the helper suites. Here's an example of how you might parameterize the initial suites to substitute in the appropriate suite path and device name at runtime. Let's look at naming conventions. What's most important when it comes to naming conventions is that you simply have one and that people adhere to it. Each automation team out there uses a different naming convention, and as long as the convention is understood and used regularly, then it's a good naming convention. Here are two examples. The example on the left shows how suffixes and prefixes might be used to clarify the type of element a particular image represents. The example on the right shows how suffixes and prefixes could be used to describe the area of an application that an image came from, and also something about its appearance. 
Here are some examples showing how one might modularize her code into short, focused, reusable handlers. The code on the far left contains references to reusable scripts and generic handlers. Consider all the different workflows that could be built out of these basic code building blocks. Search item is a parameterized script that might be used across various platforms, devices, and touch cases that require searching for something. Open Browser is a script handler that's unique to the Windows platform but could be used to open various web browsers on Windows. Maximize and Minimize are two handlers written in the generic form. Note how each handler performs a very specific function within an overall workflow. As mentioned earlier, image collections are still a useful component of many frameworks. Sometimes there is UI element variation within a particular device or platform that needs to be accounted for. Image collections provide an easy and powerful method for handling these variations without having to change your code to accommodate the variations. Note how each image inside these example image collections has a descriptive name. Now it's time to discuss OCR and its role in a framework. OCR is extremely powerful when automating across a variety of devices and platforms because OCR is not sensitive to the typeface, font size, and colors that might vary for text across these different sets. Leaning heavily on OCR when handling text elements means that fewer images will be needed, which will decrease script creation and maintenance time requirements. However, OCR tends to need a bit more help up front when you are first writing your scripts. Search rectangles limit the search area of the screen for a search, which can vastly improve the speed and reliability of OCR searches. Instead of setting search rectangles based on elements that are unique to the UI of a particular device or platform, you can set up the search rectangles to be based on the actual remote screen resolution of the SUT, which means that they adjust automatically to the current SUT. The screen part function, available on our online documentation, provides an example of how to set up adaptive search rectangles based on the proportions of the overall screen size. Add the screen part function to your core capability suite so you can leverage it from all of your application specific suites. The DPI setting improves the reliability of OCR searches and reads. Different devices might require a different DPI setting. The default DPI setting is 72, which is appropriate for most desktop SUTs, but might not work well with some mobile devices. By using variables, you can pass the appropriate DPI values into the script at the time of execution, or have the script automatically determine the identity of the SUT at runtime in order to populate the variable with the appropriate DPI value. You can find a list of DPIs used by mobile devices online and incorporate those values into your scripts. A framework can't be useful if it's not properly documented. Make sure to document every aspect of your framework, from the naming conventions used to the way the framework integrates with other tools. Include a detailed diagram of the suite structure used by the framework to help users visualize its setup and components. The documentation must also be easily and centrally accessible so that people are inclined to follow the guidelines laid out there. Someone on the team must be responsible for the upkeep of the documentation to make sure changes in guidelines and new knowledge acquired by the team is reflected quickly and accurately. The rules outlined by the documentation must be enforced. By performing regular code reviews, you can ensure that new code and images comply with the rules. Source control management systems provide a mechanism to manage changes in code as they come in. Assign a member of the team to review all new code before it's incorporated into the main branch to ensure that code adheres to the rules of the framework.